Good morning. Welcome to here and watching Good Shepherd Lutheran Church come to you via YouTube. And as you do, we like to have you prepared for the readings and you can read along with us. So to that end, I'm going to share with you this day, this uh, day we celebrate Jesus Heals Broken Hearts is our theme for this day. And as we do that, our first reading will be from Acts chapter 2. So if you want to take a moment to either write that down or mark off your Bible so that you can join in with the reading, we're going to be reading Acts chapter 2. And then our next reading will be 1 Peter. So 1 Peter chapter 1. And that'll be a little bit later past Acts. So if you find Acts, just look further to your right. And that'll be in 1 Peter chapter 1. And then after that, our gospel reading for today would be uh, Luke 24. Luke 24. And so those will be the f three readings for today. And as we do those readings, as Jason and Laura do those readings, they'll give you a few moments to, to find yourself. They'll tell you what verses as well. They'll give you a second to find yourself. And then off they will go with those readings for today. And our theme again today is Jesus heals broken hearts. We're going to be focusing on what Jesus says to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and what he does and how we can see that and hear that and understand that he really does care for us and he heals our broken hearts. Uh, our hymn, first hymn for today is Son of God, Eternal Savior. So if you have your hymnal or as you sing along, we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4 of hymn 842 in your Lutheran service, our L Lutheran service book. 842, 1, 3, and 4. Continue calling on the name of the Lord our God, and He is with us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening sentences, we read responsively. You can follow along on the screen as you watch on your screen. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia! God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. 
He He has put put all things under his his feet. Alleluia! Alleluia! We now go through our time-honored practice of confession and absolution, where we come before God, and we come before him with our broken hearts, and he cleanses us and heals us with his forgiveness. Let us now then, together, confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our our Creator and Preserver, we admit admit and confess confess our sinfulness. We are stained by sin from our very beginnings. We have sinned again and again in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have have turned away from from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for all our many sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past. And And by by the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that that we serve you in true faithfulness. Grant us victory over all that oppresses us and build your kingdom among us here through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his boundless mercy, God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and who turn to him for restoration and renewal. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, I share with you today the good God's great news for you. God says, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And also also with with you. We pray our prayer for the day. We do so together as printed on the screen. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, there it is. Let us pray. Oh God, God, through through the the humiliation humiliation of of your your Son, son, you you raised raised up the fallen world. Grant to your your faithful people, rescued rescued from from the peril of everlasting death, death, perpetual gladness, and and eternal eternal joys through Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, God, now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. First lesson today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll be starting with 14a and then jumping to verses 36 through 41. Acts chapter 2, and our pew Bible number is, page number is 1078, uh, but Acts 2, 14a. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Moving to 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all who whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from the corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. 
We continue with our next hymn of praise. It will be um, Father Welcomes. We'll be singing the chorus, verse 1, and then the chorus as printed. This lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. 1 Peter 1, 17 through 25. Peter reminds us that we are redeemed by the blood of Christ. Starting at verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the, fathers fall, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever, and this is the word that was preached to you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Our hymn of praise before the gospel reading today is, As the Deer. We'll be singing verse 1, As the Deer. you messed up not reading the words correctly, uh, the screen froze. All right, we'll continue with the gospel. <laughs> holy gospel today. The holy gospel according to St. John, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Holy gospel today is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 24, 13 through 35. 24 13 through 35. This is entitled, On the Road to Emmaus. Now that, uh, now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as he, he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is near the evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning with us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the, is gospel, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. I, our sermon hymn for today, hymn of the day, is In the Garden.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our ever-present, our risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A basis for today's message is going to be this one verse, but as we did, the very song we sang came to mind as I read and studied the scripture for today's message. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then, as I reflected on this word, right after this is when Jesus started, was walking with them and talking with them and opening their eyes and the scriptures to them and beginning with Moses and the prophets, he told everything about himself, about the, what scriptures had shared and declared. So why why did Jesus say this of them? What faulty conclusions did these two disciples make on the road three days later after the crucifixion? They, they must have made some faulty conclusion because as we see Jesus, he says what he says and he, he says to them how foolish they had been and how slow of heart to believe all that had been said. Why would he say this to them? Didn't he care for them? Was he slamming them, putting them down? Or did he care? Today I hope to see that when Jesus says and does next, it helps us see that he really did care. And that when he brought to their attention how foolish they had been and how slow of heart to believe, that he did it for good reason. Ever, ever since I began studying this passage, I've always looked ahead to see next week if we're going to read the f- continuation of this story. And each time I do, every three years, I go and look, and in the, the reading for the three-year lectionary series for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod doesn't c- c- continue with it. Though the story is there, it is here, the continuation of reading this story account doesn't continue, and I've always wondered why. I I still don't know the reason why, but maybe, just maybe, I get this point this time this year. It's this. Maybe it's to impress on us a key point. Maybe the important lesson is stay in God's Word. Keep reading it. If you don't, sooner and later, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to come up and you're going to make a faulty conclusion. And when you do, God's Word will help straighten you out. That's what I think the lesson could be. I've tried other research. I have no idea. So if somebody's out there, Lauren or whoever, check it out. Give me the answer. I don't have the time to look. Okay, so now, here we see it. God's Word is here to help us deal with faulty conclusions with broken heart. We all do this, don't we? We we all come up with faulty conclusions. And God's word even coaches us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. And then Jesus says these words in Matthew are in Matthew 4, 4. He says, It is written, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The truth is, the disciples walking that road that day had fallen victim to faulty conclusions. You and I struggle with the same today. For instance, did you know that the COVID-19 pandemic is not anything new? It's not. Something like this has happened previously to this, to us in the United States and throughout the entire world. I knew of the Black Plague and the Potato Famine. I heard about them in our history books and during middle school, but I don't recall anyone telling me about the Spanish flu. There's good reason. The Spanish flu happened during World War I. As such, The governments and the militaries both kept it hush, hush, and in the dark. They did so to keep people's morale up, not down. Well, 
It still didn't stop this pandemic from happening, and it scattered across the world, and it ravaged throughout the world through 1917 through 1919 and beyond. This one pandemic was so much larger and deadlier than what we're dealing with today. For instance, though they can't keep an accurate record because accurate records weren't being kept because they were keeping it hush-hush, They said, reservedly, 500 million people became infected by the Spanish flu. 50 million died. They said that there was more American soldiers that died during World War I from this Spanish flu than from combat. I don't know what you know or even believe, either about COVID-19 or the Spanish flu, but God knows what is true and what is false. And God knows what you and I think and what you and I believe and what ones are faulty conclusions and which ones are accurate conclusions. And that's what we see going on today. Jesus meeting these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He sees them, and he stops, and he talks with them. And he he says to them, how foolish you are being, and how slow of heart you are. He can do this. He's the Son of God. And I hope we find out he has good reason to say this to them. And tell them this. He cares. He cares about their faith and he cares about their conclusions. And he wants to help them change it and fix it. I, for one, admit this to myself. I I realize I make and have made foolish conclusions. And I continue to learn how God keeps humbling me and saving me from these faulty conclusions. And, and, and it happens when I read God's Word, and God's Word corrects me. It, it points out my faults and my mistakes and my errors of thinking and in my actions. And as I read devotions, and as I listen to others preach and teach God's Word, God helps me see where I am wrong, and He changes it, and He fixes it. And there's times that He even changes my broken heart because he's changed my conclusions. As we read God's word, God's word does convict us where we're wrong and where we're at fault. And then as we see this and realize this, God's word also then convicts us of his great love and forgiveness for us. Both are needed and both are what Jesus does today to us. And so, we need to keep reading past verse 25. Thank you, Jason. But we need to hear the rest of the story. Because if we just stop at verse 25, it appears that Jesus really doesn't care. How foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe. But that's not what happens. You see, Jesus cares a lot. He cares deeply, especially for those with broken hearts. And that's what people deal with today. People still, to this day, are dealing with broken hearts and faulty conclusions. And Jesus loves to help the brokenhearted. And so he asks them a question. Hey, did not the Christ have to first suffer all these things and then enter into his glory? As I read it, they were standing there with their faces downcast because their hearts were broken and burdened because of faulty conclusions. Let's, what were they? Well, first one, Jesus is dead and Jesus is still dead and because he's dead, everything has come to nothing. They're stuck. Jesus sees this, and now he addresses it. He says they were slow of heart 
to believe all that the scriptures had said and even what the women had shared with them. And begin there, right there. So let's look at that. They conclude that no one can find Jesus' body, therefore it's dead somewhere else. They're being logical, right? They're using their common sense, right? Dead people are dead people. They don't go anywhere unless somebody comes and takes it and moves it somewhere else. So you too, you and I, we make our conclusions. We make our conclusions. Maybe that's why Jesus was keeping himself hidden from them at the time. He wanted to impress on them how powerful and complete and full God's word is. To lean on it, stand on it, because it won't lead you astray. It will fix your broken heart. It will fix faulty conclusions. So I think he hid his appearance so that they could hear and read the word that he shared with them on the road. I think he did it for a good reason, not only for them, but for you and me today. That his identity with us is in his word. His presence in his word. His power in his word. His truth in his word. His presence in his word. And so they walk on the road. They get to where they're going. Jesus acts like he wants to go on. They invite him to come and stay. He says, sure. They sit down for a meal. He breaks the bread. They see him. He, his eye, their eyes are open. And they see him for an instant. And he disappears. And that's when we find out what they were feeling on the road as Jesus was walking with them and talking with them and telling them all about every passage that mentioned him. And their hearts burned within them. Didn't our hearts burn within us as we walked on the road? And right there they get up and they go back the seven miles they had just walked. And when they get there and they arrive, they, people start telling them, He's alive, He's risen, He appeared to Peter. And when they go, we know, He appeared to us too. And I think that is so cool that Jesus organized that event to happen such as that so that each testimony was encouraging one another that he was alive. And I think this story happened to help us see just how hard it was for them to believe this amazing story. That God talked about and said, and even Peter now finally, after all this happens, after all this happens, the, the, each one of the groups of people were telling one another that he has appeared, he's, he's alive, and they say, we know, we know. It is then that Jesus appears among them and says, peace be with you. Even then, even after talking all to themselves about one another, even then it says this, that they were still frightened, thinking they had seen a ghost. And Jesus just goes, no, don't just look at me. Don't look at my hands and feet. Touch me. I'm alive. It's me. I'm real. And hearts are healed. In faulty conclusions, fixed. He's alive. He's risen. And I think this gospel account is told so that you and I can see that these people just didn't blindly believe some story. It was real and it was true. And it still is. Jesus is alive and he heals broken hearts. That's what he does. The first believers we read struggled. We read of them struggling, having a hard time believing this amazing story. But this is what Peter testifies later on after Jesus ascended into heaven. And he says these words. He was chosen before the creation of the world. 
But he's now been revealed in these last times for your sake. Because through him, you believe God who raised him from the dead and has now glorified him. And so now your faith and your hope are in him. Jesus is alive. Jesus saves. Jesus cares. And he saves people. And their broken heart. He heals them. And he keeps healing them all our days. May this joyous remembrance of Jesus being a live and living risen Savior reigning from on high who looks down on the earth and he doesn't control it and rule it but he rules and reigns within it in the hearts and minds and the lives of believers who believe and have their hearts healed by his presence, his peace, and his power. Jesus is triumphant. He is risen and is living from the dead and reigning on high. Amen, amen, and alleluia. We now continue this day with the recitation of our Nicene Creed. It will be printed for you on your screen. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, whom for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And then the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord and giver, giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one, one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life the world, the world to, to come. come. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our prayers of the church. We'll be responding with the petitions, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Lord, we lift up your church, us, your people, and all of our gatherings throughout this world. And we pray, Lord, that you would grow us on, grow us up and strengthen us all in learning and knowing and living the message of salvation that is joyfully being told and shared throughout the world in how we live and how we act and behave and speak. Help us do this, Lord, and show and shine about the Easter victory of Jesus rising from the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Lord, we pray for the nations of the people, of the peoples throughout the world. We pray for the governments that lead and guide the nations, that they would be a source of blessings to all those people that they govern and take care of. Lord, we pray for a breaking of all forms of oppression, that all of it would be hindered, 
that you would work through it, in it, around it, and besides it. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for ourselves in this season of our Lord's victory over the death and the hell. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to live and be Easter people all year long, that we would radiate the light of Jesus in our homes, our workplaces, in communities, and at this time of stay at home. And especially as communities, again, take, start taking the steps of coming together, being together closer, guard it and protect it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who serve through their callings, especially those for, who deal with special challenges and dangers on a regular basis. We include the police, the fire, emergency personnel, military, and leadership. We also remember, Lord, at this time, of the military and those who are stationed throughout the world and abroad and at home, and whose efforts are to, to, to serve who are to serve to defend our nation in challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for those with special concerns now and needs of this day, those who are hospitalized, those who are receiving treatment and care, those who grieve, those who are unemployed and underemployed. We lift up those who are chronically ill and shut in, and, and, sh- and set apart. We pray for those who our needs are not known to us at this time. We ask that you would bless them with your presence, gracious Father, that they may have a sense of peace and protection and presence and give them a foretaste of your feast to come in the faith you've given them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, we bless you for having placed into our lives faithful Christian people to guide us and lead us and correct us. Especially on, on this day, we remember those who no, long, who no longer are among us on this earth, but have completed their earthly race and that you have given them the final taste of victory in Jesus. Lord, lead us to follow in their ways that we would rejoice together with them eternally at your table and in your mansions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now we also pray what you have taught our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, your will be done done on earth as as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily daily bread, bread, and and forgive forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the the power, power, and the the glory, forever forever and and ever. Amen. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. God, keep looking on you with his favor and keep giving you his peace and the presence of his peace. Amen. Amen. Our concluding hymn for today, and I'll make an announcement after it, is How Great Thou Art, hymn Uh, 801 verses 1, 3, and 4. How great thou art.
Okay, without rehearsing this in my mind, I do want to make a highlight. This will be in the, the Flock Talk, the newsletter they'll be sending out to you. We'll be mailing it out to you, emailing out to you, putting a copy on newsletter, and on uh, making a new interactive website. Be looking for that to happen. The announcements will be made for that. In the meantime, we're looking at trying to increase... Uh, connections uh, technology-wise, and as we do so, we have started out, we've continued with Zoom Bible Fellowship hours. We're going to be doing two this week on Wednesday and Thursday in the mornings. We'll be looking at maybe doing something in the evening based on responses. You can email me, text, or call. And you can get that information. We'll put that, if it's not on the website or uh, on the church website already, we'll have that for you. Also, we're looking for helpers. We're looking for those who have been taught how to connect to the Bible Fellowship through Zoom that you can teach and tell and show others um, over the phone or maybe even FaceTime. So we're looking for that to happen for people to be helped how to do that. And we're also looking for you to helpers to, uh, to actually be called upon to go call somebody. It seems like it's going to be one by one, one person, one couple at a time that this will happen. So again, those who need help, those who can help, will please contact us at the church. Okay, I think that's it for now. Be looking for other announcements. Uh, we'll be looking for Governor Tim Waltz to make his announcement. And based on that, we're going to be looking at possibly starting with maybe a uh, parking lot church service before we come in full force to meeting as a congregation. We're going to be talking about maybe having one or two services so we can spread out. So we're going to be trying to take chrono chronological steps going from stay at home to gathering together. Be looking for those details to come. And if I haven't told you in a while, have a great day with your Lord. Thank you.